A library is a great place to learn and gather information, and at the Hanahan Public Library, you can learn from their demonstration garden. The Butterfly and Pollinator Garden is dedicated to supporting pollinators who provide one out of every three bites of food that we eat. With me is Kathy Stone, a volunteer with Keep Hanahan Beautiful. Kathy, thanks so much for inviting us out to explore the beautiful garden space outside. How did that come to be? Well, um, the library was built in 2014, so it's pretty much brand new to us. And at the time it was built, four women from the local garden club decided that there really needed to be a garden next to the library. And fortunately, the library in Berkeley County uh, agreed and they gave us this beautiful space next to the library where we wanted to have a place where pollinators could be protected and encouraged, and we could teach peop people about pollinators and how to have a beautiful yard that protects them and also protects the environment. Sort of a dual mission, and I think folks visiting the library might just enjoy the space as a, a quiet reflection area, perhaps to read or just get in tune with their thoughts. Absolutely, and that was the main goal for the library in wanting to have a garden. They wanted a place of reflection, and it's so nice when I can see people sitting on the bench and enjoying the garden. And it's easy to find the garden. There's a very prominent landscape feature marking the entrance. Yes, there is. There's a beautiful trellis that was built about a year ago from a grant, and uh, we just planted recently some vines on either side. We have coral honeysuckle on one side and Carolina jessamine on the other side, two beautiful native vines that are just about ready to join at the top and be a beautiful arbor for the garden. And um, not too long ago, we got our sign that says Hanahan Butterfly and Pollinator Garden, and we're very proud of that. So it's a, a beautiful entry point for the garden. As we pass under the sign and through the trellis, what I notice is a wide diversity of plants available. Why is that so important? It's really important because when you want to protect pollinators, you want to provide them with a banquet that lasts all the way from the early spring into the late fall. And you want to provide all different types of uh, food sources for adults and for the caterpillar stage. So the adults, we're primarily talking about plants that are going to produce nectar. What are some of those nectar plants that are favorites of butterflies right now? Oh, we have, we have a lot of those. And one of, the, one of their favorites is lantana. We have a beautiful stand of lantana right at the entry of the garden so everybody can see lots of butterflies enjoying their food. We also have in the early spring, we have Coreopsis, um, we have Bottle Brush, we have um, a Butterfly Bush, we have just a whole spectrum of plants that are good for the adult butterfly and adult pollinators. Fantastic. And we can't forget that we need those larval host plants for the caterpillars to feed on. And I know that you have some of those in your pollinator garden as well. We do. We try to provide as many host plants as we can. We have some uh, parsley that is the plant for the caterpillar of the black swallowtail. Mm -hmm. We have passion vine, which uh, is enjoyed by the gulf, gulf fritillary, fritillary. Mm -hmm. and also the zebra longwing butterfly. We have milkweed for our monarchs, and we have a beautiful winter cassia plant that the um, sulfurs just love. You mentioned milkweed, and I know that milkweed is the host plant for monarchs. They are very particular and feed exclusively on various milkweed species, and you happen to be a monarch way station. Tell us about that. We are a monarch way station, and we have several varieties of milkweed. We have swamp milkweed, mm -hmm. uh, we have tuberosa, which is sometimes called butterfly weed, we have common milkweed, and we have uh, an aquatic variety of milkweed. We also have tropical milkweed, which can be problematic because it can encourage uh, monarchs to overwinter, and we don't want that. So what we do is cut that milkweed back to the ground in the fall, and we keep cutting it back throughout the season, and then let it come back again in the spring. That's a great practice. So um, the tropical, I think, has been pretty available uh, in the trade, and people maybe didn't know that it wasn't a good idea to plant. And, and there's still some debate about um, long-term effects on monarchs. However, we do know that it can lead to increased uh, populations of a parasite, a protozoan parasite. So it's really great to hear that although you have it in the garden, you're cutting it back. So hopefully we're doing our part to provide nectar during the season, but not um, contributing to any problems. That's right, and we're hoping by growing the other varieties, we'll eventually let them take the place of the tropical milkweed. 
In addition to the butterfly and pollinator garden, there is another demonstration garden on the premises. There is. There's a beautiful rain garden that was installed uh, shortly after the pollinator garden opened, and that was done in conjunction with Clemson Extension and the Ashley Cooper Stormwater Education Consortium. And that rain garden is connected to our 250-gallon cistern that collects rainwater from the roof of the library. That uh, garden is also used by Clemson as an educational um, site for classes that are provided to professional landscape personnel and also homeowners. Fascinating. It is such a multifaceted project and even though we're talking about a small area, it seems to me it could have large reaching impacts. It absolutely can and we're already uh, thinking about how we can expand the garden. Right now we're working on a small area that's designed to be a reading nook for children so they have a place to go to sit in the library and read. That's great, and maybe we can encourage them to become gardeners, to put that into their spare time and uh, support pollinators as well. That's what we're trying to do. We even give, give them little uh, rain buckets so they can help us water the garden. Get them involved, that's the way to go. That's right, when they're early. With everything going on here, I would imagine it takes a lot of volunteers to keep things looking nice. It does take a lot of volunteers, and we have a really nice core of people that come out every Monday and do the weeding and the watering and all the things that need to be done. Uh, this garden is a project of Keep Hanahan Beautiful, which is an affiliate of Palmetto Pride and Keep America Beautiful. Right. And if anybody's interested in becoming a volunteer, they can visit the Keep Hanahan Beautiful website. Fantastic. Thanks so much for inviting us out today. I'm truly inspired by the work going on at the Hanahan Public Library. It only takes a few small actions to have a positive impact on our environment.